Hello, thank you so much for that introduction. Hello, my name is Brian Nielsen, and welcome to the webinar on the introduction to Power Platform. If you have heard of Office 365 or Microsoft 365, but have never gotten to see how to build real applications with the suite of products available, you will really enjoy this class. One of the takeaways from this class is building applications based on existing data that you can deploy to the web or to a mobile device. I can promise no coding required and real applications that can be built off a simple Excel spreadsheet. Little introduction about myself. I'll be your instructor. My name is Brian Nielsen. I'm a senior cloud training architect with Opsgility. I've been working with Microsoft Azure since the earliest days as both an IT pro and a developer. I've worked in the IT field for almost 25 years. And over my career, I've worked with organizations of all sizes, from small shops to Fortune 1000 companies. I helped write a book on private clouds for Microsoft Press and look forward to covering this topic with you. You can contact me via LinkedIn or email. Here is the agenda for the webinar. So this is the agenda. If you feel the need to ask a question, please put it in the chat window and we'll review them after the webinar. In this webinar, I will give you a quick overview of the entire Power Platform, then go specifically into Power Apps with lots of demos. Then I'll close out with Power Automate. Watching people take advantage of these tools and empower the business has been something I have been focused on for the last few years. I sincerely look forward to showing you what is available in the Power Platform. Let's explain where Power Platform came from. This is Microsoft's solution to a hole in their technology suite for the last few years. For anyone that has used SharePoint, one of the big limitations was custom forms, complex workflows, integrating data without having to purchase expensive third-party tools. One of the biggest advantages of SharePoint was business users could build applications that could be used in the enterprise without getting IT involved. With all the advantages, users quickly found limitations as they try to push the technology farther. At the core of the entire Power Platform is Azure. Azure's breadth of technologies enables amazing tools in the Power Platform to function. The Power Platform encompasses the following. First is Power Automate. If you hear anyone asking for Flow, understand this is the same tool just recently rebranded re to Power Automate. Next is Power BI. This is Microsoft's very powerful cloud-based business intelligence service. It allows the user to build impressive interactive dashboards. Power Virtual Agents are next, and they allow the ability to quickly generate adaptable artificial intelligence chatbots without code. Power Apps is a rapid application development environment specifically designed to connect to services, connectors, and data. If you look at the outer edge of this, the dark blue circle, You'll see Dynamics 365, my Microsoft 365, and standalone applications so you can take advantage of the data that is easily available to the entire Power Platform. Data connections are a massive amount of built-in connections available to connect to non-localized data. I will cover some of the connections available later. Finally is the common data service. Think of it as a predefined business object that allows you to store data just like a regular database, but without the database complexity. Let's add a little more detail to the previous overview. Power BI is a true enterprise class business intelligence service. There is a desktop authoring tool that offers the ability to do data preparation, data discovery, and connect to an impressive amount of data types. Power BI offers impressive visualizations that provide drill down dashboards available to the cloud service. Power Automate is an impressive suite, impressive workflow suite that has dozens of pre-built processes already set up and ready to go. The user interface is designed for business users while maintaining an incredible amount of power. The more impressive part is that by learning Power Automate, you can instantly jump into Azure's more sophisticated log logic apps because the interface is so similar. Power Apps is a true platform available now to replace InfoPath Forms. Power Apps has the ability to generate zero code apps instantly, and we will see that later. The no code rapid design interface with the impressive connections 
available. Our virtual agent is Microsoft's latest generation chatbot. This tool is all about taking the complexity away and empowering the end user. Power Automate and Power Out apps are going to be the focus of the rest of this presentation. Power Apps allows you to design and build a business app from a drag and drop interface without writing code in a traditional programming language like C Sharp. Think of a design and Power App the same way you would design a PowerPoint. You can utilize basic functionality to quickly put together an app or use more advanced Excel-like expressions for logic or working with data. Apps are easily built that can integrate business from a wide variety of Microsoft and third-party sources. Your app can be deployed on the web or to mobile devices. Another option is to utilize Microsoft Common Data Service. This allows for an automatically generated model-driven app for your data and processes. Model-driven design also automatically adjusts to phones and laptops utilizing a component-focused approach. There are several options for getting started creating apps and power apps. We'll walk through a couple of them now and, and get into more detail a little later. First, we have Canvas apps. We mentioned those apps earlier, but we're going to go into more detail on how to create them and work with them. Next, we'll have model-driven apps that offer no-code functionality utilizing the pre-built structures I mentioned before. Finally, we have the Power Apps portal as well as starting from templates. Templates will dive into the next and a little later into this section. Most Canvas apps utilize external data that is stored in data sources. Data sources can be as simple as a SharePoint list or an Excel file stored in OneDrive. I am including a small list of potential data sources, but many data sources are available to be utilized. It is possible to connect to Salesforce or Twitter for following certain hashtags. It is possible to access on-premises data also. Additionally, you are not limited to just one data source. You can include multiple data sources in your Power App. Another important data source is called the Common Data Service, which I introduced at the beginning. It is a service that stores data in entities. There are many entities available that cover typical scenarios. It is possible to extend them and create custom entities specific to your business requirements. Compared to normal Azure services, the Common Data Service is very simple to manage and does not require a database expert to administer it. Data is also available with role-based security, so you can limit who has access to certain entities in your organization. Dynamics 365 data is stored in the Common Data Service, so you can quickly build apps utilizing Dynamics 365 data. You can also add rich metadata to describe and build relationships. Another benefit is logic and validation that'll help you define business rules, workflows, and process flows. You can also increase productivity by exposing this data via add-ins in Excel. First, we're gonna co be covering several demonstrations. First, we'll create a Canvas app in SharePoint and show what happens when you change the model and layout and how publishing affects that. Next, we'll be creating two Canvas apps. The first will be ex from Excel and the second from Dynamics 365. Finally, we will build out a model-driven app. I think you will be surprised at the no-code approach and how the interface looks. Give me one moment to get my screen up. So this is just a very basic SharePoint list and it is used for leads. So as you can see, the title of it is, is Bird Dog. So people that would submit leads and provide new information. If you're used to SharePoint at all, you're used to the new Office 365 interface and all your the way you would input information is over here on the side. Well, let's see if we can make that a lot better. So now we're going to create a blank Canvas app from blank. So we're going to create it for here. And this is going to be Bird Dog V1. Mm -hmm. 
Pray the demo God with me today. Over the last few hours, I have noticed it running quite slow. So I am going to actually spin this up on another and show you how fast it can actually happen. So if you notice in SharePoint, Power Apps are right here. So as you can see, this is complete blank canvas, and this gives you the ability to insert buttons, insert text, insert labels. You can do pretty much anything you want. Now, if we go back over here and go create an app, we already saw what the interface looks for, like in SharePoint. But if we want to create an app directly in here, so this one we'll call Bird Dogs V2. So now it's going directly back to Power Apps. I actually was getting error with this earlier. Like I said, demo gods. Okay, this should work. So now what it's doing is actually looking at the schema. So the schema of this list that you're looking at has these values. So I've got an address, a city, state, zip, owner name, alternate owner names, phone numbers, email addresses, status, and disposition. So this is pretty basic information. And it's taking all that schema and it's looking at what those types of fields they are, whether they're images, whether they're text fields or numeric values. And it's actually generating a complete interface for this. So now if I go back over here, you can see I've got a complete interface. I can hit a play button over here. I can go through all of these. I can actually edit the values inside here. And it was that quick to deploy an app. So let's go ahead and save. And let's go ahead and publish this. So Let's go and look at what this looks like. So now we've got all this information in a interface that is available on a mobile app. So this is actually from my Samsung phone. So one of the things that kind of makes this interface really amazing is how easy it is to make a change. So if you wanted to actually have this layout change a lot based on your needs, it's really easy to get everything exactly like you want. And if you want to add in more value, so let's make everything just a little bit tighter. Let's add in some more text. Actually, I wanted to add in a label. Of course, the demo gods are fighting me today. Come on, stop. Okay. So now we can see 
this is the schema that actually exists inside there. So if I want to actually include something like the zip code, or I can actually get right to it. So now I've got this zip code in here. So if somebody had a very unique scenario where they just needed the mailing address in front of them, they didn't want to have to go to the details every single time. You could quickly put this together and have a kind of the perfect interface for them. And you can do this based on kind of whatever scenario you want. There may be somebody that needs a phone number or something else that is very specific to a need. So you can customize exactly what they want. And now you can save this. And now you can see I've added in a zip code to all this information. The other thing is without any coding or without any changes at all, if I do a search for the very last one, which is Cabo. Or was Cabo? Right there, some way. Gotta love a, a demo that is not, it's gonna fight me. There. I think you get the idea of what this is doing. Next one I want to do is actually show you how to create an, a floor estimates app. One of the things that I know everybody has around is Excel spreadsheets. I've been around lots of organizations and tons of organizations from salespeople to HR to finance are living their entire world in Excel spreadsheets like this. Now, wouldn't it be nice if you can have it so you weren't working in this interface or sharing this around or trying to make sure you had the latest version, if it was in your email or if it was somewhere else. So it becomes one of the major difficulties with working with Excel. And it's not exactly a modern way to do things. One of the things that you can do so we're going to start from data. I've already uploaded this particular data to my OneDrive. So you can see I've defined it as a connection. And it's flooring estimates. So this is exactly the same Excel file I was showing you earlier. So name, category, price, image. And again, it's going to look at this schema, connect, and it's going to infer what this is going to look like and automatically generate this complete interface for you. Now, if you think of the value that this brings, let's say that this is one of the demonstrations I see many, many times is, let's say that you're doing, you're looking at OneDrive and you wanna open this Excel file and maybe it's your email, maybe it's in OneDrive and now you wanna zoom in and you try and zoom in and find this one particular value because you're in front of a client and you're trying to get this one value and then they ask, well, what color is it? Doesn't really provide you much value at that point because you have the Excel document, but you don't have all the information. You don't have the ability to share it like you could. But with an application like this built from an Excel spreadsheet, the fact that OneDrive is cloud accessible also means that multiple people can interact with it at the same time. So now you've got all the detail, you've got pictures, you've got all the price information and everything is instantly available. So now I highlighted everything that was hardwood. Very impressive stuff considering the lack of amount of coding that's required to do something like this. Let's do one more. Same concept, we're going to start with data. This time we're gonna push it a little bit farther and we're gonna start with Dynamics 365. Wish I could get feedback from everyone. They had a choice of which one they would wanna see.
So let's do accounts. Again, utilizing the same concept of having to open up a Dynamics CRM application, whether you're on the golf course, whether you're at a lunch presentation or something like that, versus having something very simple that would provide you this information. Of course, it didn't give me my right information. Oh, it's still loading. Ah, so actually a good thing to explain. So what I was showing you this start from data, when I mentioned the connections earlier, you can see there's a default one in this cowboy dev. If I do this one for accounts, you can see the different. So I was showing you the common data first. Common data is that layer that you don't have to pay attention to and you can just put data to it very quickly and you don't have to think about it. Or you can go directly to, you can see right here, common data service directly to Dynamics 365. I need better icons to differentiate which one's better, which. Now we have the full application. And all the data. Again, super easy to add, update, refresh, even work offline. Search is built in. Things like this are what really empowers the end user. And like I was talking about before, actually, let me clear this search. Let's say there was multiple departments and they needed this data in different ways. So if they just needed a phone number every single time in this, well, let's just add one label that was the phone number. So now the phone number is available instantly on all of these. And I just made this change in two, three seconds. So it's that quick to respond to a change. The other thing to think about is if you've got multiple people looking at this data, multiple people could create their own power apps and have no knowledge of the other apps existing. So you don't have to sit there as a developer, user interface person trying to figure out, well, this person needs to see it this way, this person needs to see it this way. They can just create their own and customize the information exactly as they need. This is what's really gonna empower the business. Let's do one final one. So we're gonna do the model driven from blank. This is a completely different concept, but that gives you an idea of where you can go with the whole entity mindset. And the end result, you're, if you're gonna, anything like me, you're gonna be shocked what the end result is gonna be. So I'm gonna call this one accounts. So I'm gonna leave everything else default. And this is selecting the entity. So like I was mentioning before, this is what all these pre-built models are. So you've got approval requests, articles, knowledge bases, chatbots, connectors, contacts. I'm just gonna choose account just to be really simple. And you can decide whether you want to display all the forms or just a subset of the forms. Let's go ahead and publish this. Again, the objective of this is to hit the ground running, empower the business so that they can actually accomplish things very quickly. So now if you look at this, have ever worked in dynamic CRM, 
it should look very familiar to you. I actually have Dynamic CRM up over here. So this is Dynamic CRM, and this is the quick little power up that I just threw together. That looks a lot like it. So if I click New, it does look very, very familiar. But again, this is a baseline. This is somewhere you could start, and you could extend this farther and farther and farther. But the objective of using this is you're purely model driven. So you aren't worried about the interface at all. You don't worry about it. You don't think about it. The objective is to just get the information in front of the user and make them make better decisions. And that was all I was going to do for this Canvas demos. Now we're going to go into Power Automate. You'll notice I put parentheses at the end of this. It used to be called flow. So if you hear somebody refer to it as flow, that's what I'm just trying to get you used to. So organizations are increasingly using business process flows to model their processes. This allows much more flexibility in how business processes are built and used. Now it is possible to look at bottlenecks and adapt to them rather than papers sitting on a desk or an email while someone is not available. Plus, with the added advantage of not having to wait on IT to make the change. Let's define specifically what workflow is for this conversation. So, workflows streamline and automate business processes. This can include signatures, approvals, feedback, or tracking status of a repeatable procedure. The goal of workflows is to save time and effort and increase the consistency and efficiency of routine tasks. Microsoft Power Automate enables non developers to work smarter by automating workflows. I want to provide a little overview to the, some of the steps you'll see as I go through. The first step you'll see in any workflow is a trigger. This can be activated manually, on a schedule, or on an event. Actions are what the process does. So the first part is always going to be a trigger. The second part is always going to be an action. Here's some of the Connections available inside. So when I say a lot, this is maybe 10%. I just wanted to give, throw out some big names. So Dropbox, Salesforce, Google Drive, Slack, just about any cloud API, it is REST available. So a tremendous amount of functionality and adaptability and connectability is available with you in this Power Automate application. The demo that we're going to be doing is a vacation request workflow. So just a quick little diagram. So we're going to request vacation time. We're going to email the manager. The manager is going to decide whether they get, approve it or reject it. And it's going to email the requester and set the approval status. And hopefully I'm done with all my issues for demos. So this is going to be vacation requests. Going to make a few changes to this list. First one, I'm going to rename title. I can spell it question. Go into version name and require constant approval. So this is going to be if it, Anybody has SharePoint experience, this is actually going to be the meat of actually what does the actual workflow. Let's add a couple more fields. The start date. And let's make this date and time. And date, also date and time.
And that is it for the SharePoint list. So now let's go into our favorite flow. Or not flow anymore. Power app. Power. So the reason I keep calling it flow, it is actually flow.microsoft.com. Get there. But this is Power Automate. I want to go over a couple of little pieces of how this actually works. So you've got my flows. Think of this as kind of your staging area. You're testing things. You're not really pushed out to the public. And you've got team flows. The difference with this is once you go from a my flow to a team flow, then basically what you're doing is you're sharing the application to somebody else in the organization. So someone else can make edits to it and actually make modifications to it. You've also got business process flows. As you can see, this one's the translation process. Again, the power of the Azure backend, you can have an Azure translation process as part of a workflow. Things like this are really, really cool. I was going to do a demo on the UI flows, but their installer will not work on my machine right now. I don't know why, but this is actually using robotic process automation. So you can actually re record screens and click buttons, enter fields, and things like that. Really, really powerful stuff, and it just came out. So remember, I was talking about how that it can be triggered. So I want to have this automatically triggered. And it's going to be happening when a SharePoint item is created. And we're use the vacation requests. So next thing that we need to do, we need to actually get the manager because we need to know who this person is or whose manager this is so they can actually approve it. So we're going to take in created by email, add another step, and this tool itself has logic. So the next thing I want to do is actually a condition. So it puts that right at the top because it would be the next logical action that I'm going to take. And I forgot a piece. And you create it. It's a good part about this tool. So we need to start an approval. So these are different types of approval, approvals available. And one of the things you'll notice is that it says approve or check, everyone must approve. So when I go to, into the condition, you'll notice that it actually adds a, a loop inside there. And this allows you to have either one person accept it or many people accept it. So I'm just gonna choose the first to respond. I would say, please review. And I'm going to search down here, vacation. Wrong spot. So, Putting in a title, and this is basically going to generate the email. For some reason, this is giving me different information. I'm not going to fight this one. 
some reason it's giving me different information. So I'm going to go to the one that's working. Let's edit this one and show you where this is. So same information, site address, the list name. I'm going to get the manager information, exactly where I was, the start and wait for approval. Approval type, exactly what I had before, so the first to respond. Please review the vacation request assigned to. That's what was not coming up for me. So now the details are created by, and we wanted to, who it was created, created by display name, and then when it was actually created. We're going to provide a link to the item if the manager actually wants to review it, and then the description is also going to be available. This is the logic I was telling you about. This apply to each, so it actually will loop through inside here. There are multiple ones. So this variable right here, there's actually responses, not just response. So if the response is equal to approve, then we're going to go to the yes and send an email. So let's log in as a different user entirely. And put in a request. So this is, put it for Kellyanne. And say they're gonna take a long weekend. And basically what it, it set this to pending. If I open up Office over here, I'll get an email as soon as it starts running. If I don't have any more issues. So now we are running. This will actually give you a visualization of where it is. So you can see it passed through this information and I just got to I pinged that I got an email. So it got the manager information, and now it's in this part. So it's actually start and wait for the approval. So now I can go to the email. So I've got a pending approval, actually two of them. I'm going to approve this and just submit. You can watch it. Now it's completed that process, and now it's gone through this process and completed all of this. Now we've gone and sent an email. Now we can see we've got a notification over here that it has been approved and I don't know if it'll refresh this just in time. It usually takes a moment or two for this to refresh, but it'll set this to actually active or to uh, approved. You see, so it has been approved. Just refresh this. Of course, it's going to take forever to refresh. But anyway, that is the objective, and that is the goal of what you can do with this kind of tool. One of the things I wanted to show you inside this is just the examples that are available. Come on. One of the things that a lot of people get concerned with when they're getting into doing workflow is I don't know where to start. And that is a valid concern. This is a massive list you can keep clicking this more button and but let me give you an idea of what some of these are so send myself a reminder in 10 minutes start approval when an item is added record form responses in sharepoint save outlook attachments to onedrive these are pre-built pre-made they're ready to go so if i create one let's do this Same concept. Actually, let's go for one a little more detailed.
So this is create a new record in Dynamics 365 when a new list item is added. So if anybody's tried to do anything with Dynamics 365, you know, your first thing you got to do is call IT and you may be charged a lot of money. They may have to bring a consultant in. It's going to take a long time to do something like this. Like I said, it is pre-set up, it is predefined, it is ready to go. So I'm going to just utilize exactly the same information we used before. This VR. And I'm going to use accounts. So if you can see here, now it's going to pull the information over. So I'm just going to go ahead and create it by display name. That's going to be the account name. That's the only value I'm going to worry about. So now if we create another, let's create a Bill Gates. Oops. Forgot he needed to take vacation. Say okay, just waiting for it to run. One thing to just to be aware of when you're working with any of these automation tools in the cloud is you're really not in control of the timing. So it's a completely different mindset than if you know tools like uh, BizTalk or something like that, where you're trying to be very, very time sensitive. This one, you're kind of you're kind of up in the air. You can't really control when it's going to arrive. It may be two seconds and it may be five minutes, but it does get there. I have not ever had one that wasn't delivered. So we can see this actually was successful, did create a new record. So let's refresh this. I believe I already saw it. There's my uh, Leah Kelly. So I just took in, remember this was the value that I, I passed in. So it was actually the person that created the record, not Bill Gates. But it is that easy to get data into Dynamics 365 from SharePoint. So dramatic changes, incredible amount of power available inside of the entire power platform. For the summary, we have covered the power platform. We've gone through power apps. We've also gone over power automate. This video will actually go on Opstility's YouTube. So if you get a chance or you have any other questions, the, it will be archived and will be available on here if you have any other questions or comments you want to add to it. And now, if you want to add any questions to the chat, I'm available. No questions, everybody got it? Makes sense? So the question is, I'm in IT. Do we need to do any special setup for our users to be able to create Power Apps? This is a licensing issue. So E3 and up will also be need to be applied for doing Power Apps. There are also restrictions on the type of connections that you can do. Certain connections require a different license and a different pricing model. Can you add, another question is, can you add code to fields and to perform a task after an update? So, you can actually just kick off another workflow. So you can look for an event because everything in this is event driven. So if there is a change to a particular record, you can say, kick off another process. Ah, I was like, so 
you can have it refresh the screens and you can actually have multiple screens display. So you've got multiple different layouts that you can possibly do. And within Power Apps, you can have it refresh. So if you think of the old ways with InfoPath, if you wanted to have a section display or hide based on a dropdown, you can do that exact same functionality in Power Apps. That answer Betty's question so far?